right with you? Something a bit different today. Um, a little brief look at some three and a half inch discs. Um, look at a uh, floppy disk drive and its specs. And then look at the requirements to prepare for a read operation. So let's get into it. So anyway, here we have the typical three and a half inch discs, uh, originally designed by Sony, uh, taken over by the rest of the world in, in its day. And um, the highlight is that it's a plastic package like this, with the medium actually encapsulated inside, and that's a round piece of magnetic um, material with a, a possibility to connect in to rotate it and then yeah this protective cover and then it also has the functionality of a right protections um, cover here so if you open it up and then you actually have it right protected and then you can close it disable it and this was the double density version and then um, later they come up with a high density version so of course then uh, increasing the data storage capacity and then also this added one more hole to indicate that it's a high, high density um, disk and then of course to handle those disks then you have um, floppy disk drives the real retro version that I have here and um, as we see here, this is the, the Sony, a very specific model. And here you can see it has a rotation motor and then lots of electronics. And this is of the age where the actual drive controller is already integrated and much smaller than it used to be in, in the day. But this is a bit of a special drive because the, um, the connector that it has this here is not PC compatible, and it's also missing the um, power input connector that one usually associates with standard PC floppy drives. So this is a little bit before the time that floppy disk drives, uh, the actual unit, were standardized. And um, this is theoretically speaking, it only supports um, double density disks. So I took the cover off just to make it a little bit more visible. So this has a these have a very interesting caddy mechanism to be able to um, take in a disc and then pop it out again. And then at the same time it um, opens it up to be um, accessed. And if we look at some of the main features, it has a read and write head. And in this case, this drive has two, one at the bottom and one on the top. It has a stepper motor here to control the movement of the head over the uh, magnetic platter. And then it has a, um, a zero track sensor. Uh, yeah, and the motor I already showed that was underneath. And um, then it also has like a sensor that the for the read write. Um, Enable, enable disable right so it's actually in these drives that it's uh, me mechanical optical uh, con electronic connection so that if you, it actually blocks the right circuitry so you, there's no, there's no ener energization of the right circuitry if um, the right protection is enabled yeah, well, I was successful in finding the um, specifications for the drive so quick look at um, yeah, highlighting the main points of interest so I'll go through all, all the details uh, just to comment on the mechanical dimensions they are actually the same as the um, what you have in a normal PC of the day <laughs> so you can actually screw it in and you won't have it but it's the only, you'll only notice when you go to connect in the power that there's no power connector and if you insert insert the um, flat cable then you'll end up in problems if you switch the machine on because it's uh, totally wired totally different anyway let's have a look at some maybe we have to zoom in just a little bit 
me so much so we can actually see. So anyway, here we have unformatted capacity, you know, one megabit per disk. <laughs> uh, and this is the encoding standard, MFM, so we'll get back to that in, in a later stage. And then of course it's a half a megabit per surface, so that means that it divides it into two different surfaces, and then you put 6.25 kilobits per track. And I'm assuming it's linear track size so it doesn't matter if it's on the outer outer edge or on the inner edge it's going to be the same capacity but we will also be able to um, figure that out uh, later and then a whole 500 kilobits per second for mfm encoding burst transfer right ah, whopping fast access times of course so Track to track slew rate is 6 milliseconds. Track to track step settling time is 50 milliseconds. A motor start time is a whole second. <laughs> so, not the fastest thing in the world. Um, let's see, was there anything in here? Okay, here we go. Has the, yeah, the 16 RPM recording density. Uh, track density 0 0.1875 millimeters. It's got 80 cylinders. Uh, a total of 160 tracks. And then two heads. So it's got 80 cylinders per side. And then a total of 160 tracks. That's the way I interpret it. And this is the cool thing one hasn't been dealing with these specs for so many years, though. I'm, um, one wonders if they, when they talk about these different terminologies, the fund really understands them correctly. But uh, I think that by when we move forward, we'll actually be able to find out these things through um, proof and error. And um, then we have just power usage, temperature, uh, mechanical endure, bump endure. Ah, I forget. Oh, here you see the actual connector layout, and, and it's different from the PC one. And also on the side here, you have the um, ability to assign what address this um, this disk drive has. And then you can, in, in a system on one cable, you can have up to four drives. I've actually only seen a maximum of two normal PC uses, and then it was one, and then there was none. <laughs> and the whole controller disappeared. So that's the, that's the history of floppy disk drives. Okay, and then if we look at interfacing, just a very brief comment that will affect um, the read planning that um, it actually requires a specific logic gate for the input signals and then to uh, process the um, output signals from the drive. Uh, and I think you have to, one has to realize that th this here. Uh, the connection between the host computer and the disk drive is usually it's a flat cable. Um, uh, I, don't, I can't remember. They, it had a maximum length that you're, it's allowed to have. But, uh, I think that they've, they've tested it with this specific uh, logic gate um, output um, stage and found out that it works for what they need. So I think we we'll also integrate this the usage of these gates um, in the... Um, prototype design of, for the reading operation so that we stay compliant with their electrical requirements. Uh, moving on. So, let's see. So, I just thought we could go through the signals that are probably relevant to the read operation. So, um, First one is drive select, and we'll only have one drive, so we'll set the drive select signal zero to high, and that'll be that. And um, then there's the stepping to enable us to move the head in, in that direction, and that'll be a pulse high operation, and it's input to the drive. And then we had 
direction, which says, shall we be moving towards the spindle or out from the spindle? And um, what did it say? Uh, it would be high move out and low move in, according to the specification. And then there's head select, so that's obviously which head is active. And the, it'll be high if it's the upper one or low if it's the lower head. And right gate. Um, I think that was the, the right gate signal is true, low, a true low pulse on the gate data line will cause a bit to be written to the disk. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, it, uh, yeah, this had two things, though. This always confused me. It has a, a right gate that you define, are you writing or not? Uh, so basically this will be an input and false. And then it had right data, which is the actual signal line where you put the data on that line that you want to end up on the disk, the serial data. And um, so basically we can, uh, we set the right gate input to false and then we just, we can ignore the right data. We don't need to put anything there. And then there is, um, this was the right data. And then the index. Uh, so this every time the disk rotates, then you get an index signal um, when it passes the zero point. Um, so that gives you, from a rotational perspective, the, the starting position for the track. And then uh, this gives you the the track zero zero indicates that the uh, the heads are head is positioned at track zero on track zero. Mm, right protect. Uh, we can just that's an output, but we can just ignore it. And then uh, read data. That is important. So that's the signal from which the stream of how uh, re re data being read comes the ones and zeros, so we want that one. Uh, this change, we can just ignore that. Not relevant for what we're doing. This change reset also the same, we can forget about that. Don't need that. Uh, ready is an output, and we should check if it's true to make sure everything's operational. Of course, motor on we need, so, and that'll be input, and we'll set that to true. In use, uh, it's input and true, but basically I don't think we actually need it. It's more of a factor of indicative um, signal. So moving on, ah, and then we actually has a bunch of timing diagrams. Some are usually time timing diagrams. The first time you look at them, they're a bit confusing because they're usually not the scale. So if you would actually use the timings then and, and draw them out to scale, the picture wouldn't look like this one. Uh, so that's the head axis, so drive select, direction, step. understand what this is. Well, usually this is probably this uh, somehow it's trying to indicate the sta how you stabilize or under what timing criteria um, you're stable from a head perspective. Ah, I don't care about that. And then it's just the track um, zero zero signal behavior in both directions coming in and out of it. Right data we don't care about and then we have here we have the mainly very inter the most interesting sequence so you you do a select you put the motor on the disk is inserted oh we've already pre-insert the disk it's ready we step to the correct location uh, we don't write we select the correct head 
either the upflow or lower one, and then we get data, a data flow. So this is, of course, our objective is to get the data flow from the correct track. And then it's the indication of the index pulsing. This change we don't have to care about. And uh, power supply stuff again, not of any interest for us. It's got a few little bit of logic sequence diagrams how things should be set up, but basically since we're just running prototype actions, then there's an extra grounding instruction. But who cares about grounding? <laughs> and then it had a few test points. A whole whopping three. <laughs> so it's the track zero signal and then the RF signal differential. This is for uh, probably for adjusting the disk. If you had a calibration disk, then you could actually measure the RF signal directly from the heads and then calibrate the, the mechanics. And that's the end of it. So, anyway, the objective here is to um, yeah, sleep on this data and then come up with some kind of a interface to the drive. And probably the first pass will be just to get it up, get it powered up, get the motor running, and do some stepping, see that we get some data flowing out. So, not nothing, anything more advanced than that. So, but if you would like to join this um, show, then um, you're welcome. And. I'll see you in the next one. It'll be um, smoke or data. We'll see.